Chapter 31 The Last Chapter My dear, my very dear Wormwood, my puppet, my pigsney. How mistakenly, now that all is lost, you come whimpering to me to ask whether the terms of affection in which I address you meant nothing from the beginning. Oh, far from it. Rest assured, my love for you and your love for me are as like as two peas. I have always desired you as you, pitiful fool. Desired me. The difference is that I am the stronger. I think they will give you to me now. Or a bit of you. Love you. Why, yes. As dainty a morsel as ever I grew fat on. You have let a soul slip through your fingers, the howl of sharpened famine for that loss re-echoes at this moment through all the levels of the kingdom of noise, down to the very throne itself. It makes me mad to think of how well I know what happened at the instant when they snatched him from you. There was a sudden clearing of his eyes, was there not? as he saw you for the first time and recognized the part that you had in him and knew that you had it no longer. Just think, and let it be the beginning of your agony, what he felt at that moment, as if a scab had fallen from an old sore, as if he were emerging from a hideous shell-like tetter, as if he shuffled off for good, and all a defiled, wet, clinging garment. By hell, it is misery enough to see them in their mortal days, taking off dirtied and uncomfortable clothes, and splashing in hot water, and giving little grunts of pleasure, stretching their eased limbs. What then of this final stripping, this complete cleansing, the more one thinks about it, the worse it becomes. He got through so easily! No gradual misgivings, no doctor's sentences, no nursing home, no operating theater, no false hopes of life. Sheer, instantaneous liberation. One moment it seemed to be all our world. The scream of bombs, the fall of houses, the Dink and taste of high explosive on the lips and in the lungs, the feet burning with weariness, the heart cold with horror, the brain reeling, the legs aching, and next moment, all this was gone. Gone like a bad dream, never again to be of any account. Mm, defeated, outmaneuvered, fool! Did you mark how naturally, as if he'd been born for it, the earth-born vermin entered the new life? How all his doubts became, in the twinkling of an eye, ridiculous. I know what the creature was saying to itself. Yes, of course. It always was like this. All horrors having followed the same course, getting worse and worse, and forcing you into a kind of bottleneck until, at the very moment when you thought you must be crushed, behold, you were out of the narrows, and all was suddenly well. The extraction hurt more and more, and then the tooth was out. The dream became a nightmare, and then you woke. You die and die, and then you're beyond death. How could I ever have doubted it? As he saw you, he also saw them. I know how it was. You reeled back, dizzy and blinded, more hurt by them than he had ever been by bombs. The degradation of it! 
that this thing of earth and slime could stand upright and converse with spirits before whom you, a spirit, could only cower. Perhaps you had hoped that the awe and strangeness of it would dash his joy, but that is the cursed thing. The gods are strange to mortal eyes, and yet they are not strange. He had no faintest conception till that very hour of how they would look, and even doubted their existence. But when he saw them, he knew that he had always known them, and realized what part each one of them had played at many hours in his life when he had supposed himself alone. So that now he could say to them one by one, not, Who are you? But, So it was you all the time. All that they were and said at this meeting woke memories. The dim consciousness of friends about him, which had haunted his solitudes from infancy, was now explained. That central music in every pure experience, which had always just evaded memory, was now at last recovered. Recognition made him free of their company almost before the limbs of his corpse became quiet. Only you were left outside. He saw not only them. He saw him. This animal, this thing begotten in a bed, could look on him. What is Blinding, suffocating fire to you is now cool light to him, is clarity itself, and wears the form of a man. You would like, if you could, to interpret the patient's prostration in the presence, his self-abhorrence, and utter knowledge of his sins. Yes, Wormwood, a clearer knowledge even than yours, on the analogy of your own choking, and paralyzing sensations when you encounter that deadly air that breathes from the heart of heaven. But it's all nonsense. Pains he may still have to encounter, but they embrace those pains. They would not barter them for any earthly pleasure. All the delights of sense, or heart, or intellect with which you could once have tempted him, even the delights of virtue itself now seem to him in comparison, but as the half-nauseous attractions of a rattled harlot would seem to a man who hears that his true beloved, whom he had loved all his life, and whom he had believed to be dead, is alive, and even now at his door. He is caught up into that world where pain and pleasure take on transfinite values, and all our arithmetic is dismayed. Once more, the inexplicable meets us, next to the curse of useless tempters like yourself. The greatest curse upon us is the failure of our intelligence department. If only we could find out what he is really up to. Alas, alas, that knowledge in itself, so hateful and mawkish a thing, should yet be necessary for power. Sometimes I am almost in despair. All that sustains me is the conviction that our realism, our rejection in the face of all temptations, of all silly nonsense and claptrap, must win in the end. Meanwhile, I have you to settle with. Most truly do I sign myself your increasingly and ravenously affectionate uncle, Screwtape. You have been listening to 
The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis Originally published in England by Geoffrey Bess in 1942, now in the public domain. This book has been read for you by R. Marshall Weber. This recording of the reading of this book is licensed under the General Public License, Version 2.